off the top. Al Thornton does the same. Here comes Birdsong. Chris Birdsong shot out of a cannon down the back straight away. Give him a dirty motherfucker, man. Jump in this thing and see what he'll do. Moment of silence, Eric. We lost a GoPro. Yeah. I put the wrong SIM card in that GoPro, which had a lot of footage on it that I needed for this video. <laughs> it had all of the intro stuff on it, and it had the motor swap, it had all of the pre race stuff on it, you know, getting the car ready for the races, repairs and whatnot, and putting in, well, all that is uh, gone because that GoPro got destroyed. And that was the GoPro that I had the longest. But you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and blame it all on Derek. <laughs> so I had that GoPro mounted to this here bumper. And uh, <laughs> actually it wasn't that bumper because the bumper that it was mounted to was destroyed along with the GoPro. So that GoPro exists no more along with that footage. So now I'm gonna go ahead and have to start from the beginning and sum it up a little bit because we'd already done raced. The car is back from the racetrack in all of its uh, damage from racing. So we already repaired this once at the racetrack. That's already been repaired once at the racetrack. Having to fix some suspension. Let's see, oh yeah, all the bolts, the hardware, it's all, these were all bent, having to replace them. So that just goes to show how rough the track was and what kind of racing was involved. But let's go from the beginning. So my new subscribers, you guys probably don't know that uh, I do race. You guys probably only know me from Mopars building fabricating like we're building this one right now you know hellcats race or uh, mopar race cars stuff like that probably didn't know that i also like to get my hands dirty and go dirt track racing so this video is supposed to lead into that so i believe it got the footage i lost was leading into putting that decal on so everything before that which was the motor swap and the reason we did a motor swap is I had a crate motor, which the crate motors is a factory GM 400 horsepower circle track crate motor. Mine had a bent valve. So I went and robbed the open motor out of my dad's race car in Arizona, which this one makes about 550, let's just call it 550. This one makes 550 compared to the 400. But here's the disadvantage on putting an open motor in a modified with a crate motor. This now has to have iron heads. And there used to be a spoiler right here. You know, the spoiler is no longer there. Because if you have an open motor, you have to remove the spoiler and it has to have iron heads. That's how they try and ding you. But you know what? I liked that open motor. <laughs> that open motor was zinging. But uh, yeah. So this is going to drop into where the new SD card took over because the other one was full. So let's go ahead and go back in time now. Okay. To all my Mopar guys, it's not my fault. The reproduction world is getting so bad that even the overseas parts, they can't even spell Dodge right. Not my fault.
another constant thing you're having to replace on a dirt car the wrap or stickers always having to replace body panels but me i try and make those things last as long as possible i run them through the english wheel roll those suckers out and the english wheel actually doesn't hurt the wrap but you can only do that so many times before the wrap is just totally junk or if the nose is totally crunched like this one was all new nose new skirt new front bumper oh that's like my fifth nose on this car and i haven't erased it that much dirt cars Body is officially race ready. Engine is almost ready to go. The only thing I've been doing right now is changing the oil, the fluids, all that. This engine hasn't been raced. Oof. In, I want to say, six years. And I just popped the oil filter off, cut it open, and it was minty good inside there. So... I know the engine's in great shape and it had great oil pressure, but I just had to double check. The oil that came out of the engine was perfectly good. The oil filter was clean. So we just refilled it, dropped it on the ground, and we just topped, it up, topped the tank off with what I normally run, which is nine inches of fuel. And the reason I do that is weight. So you try and get it to the minimum weight and actually get the weight where you want it. So I want to get it on the scales. Normally we don't scale them. We just measure spring height, which is the spring load or tire wheel load. But now we've got an open motor with an iron heads on it. I moved the battery to just in front of the rear axle and we took away some weight up front. So I kind of just want to see where my weights are at distribution wise, just for reference. Maybe I need to slide some weight forward or slide some more weight back. So we're going to get it on the scales and see what that number is. Twenty-three seventeen without me in it, and it's twenty-five oh six with me in it. Fifty-six pounds heavy, but it needs to be twenty-four fifty. Derek just shit his pants on camera. You hear that? <laughs> it needs to be twenty-four fifty after the race. So that fifty-six pounds probably be all right because we burn methanol, so it burns all twice as much as gas. And then that should be good. Get it off the scales, get it on the trailer, get everything loaded up, packaged, and we can start going to the track tomorrow. Today is practice day. We got everything just about loaded up. The only thing left really is a few minor little things, and I need to get some spares. These are, most of these are tires that were given to me. They're used tires, and the reason I want to run used tires is monies. I just want to go and race and have fun. I, I figured out use tires, only buy fuel and entry fee, and sometimes you'll come out ahead, but you'll still have a great time. And showing up with all used stuff, an old, old race car, um, I can only go up. The guys that spend tons of money, they can only go down. So use tires, use parts it is, and just have fun. Oh, oh this, okay. This is like one of my newest, favoritest things check out my new wheel covers <laughs> these things are freaking awesome they look just like real craigers i gotta show you on the car isn't that just bitching looking we got a charger modified race car with craigers on it that is cool too bad we're not towing it with smurf this time because that one's got craigers on hey you know what let's do a comparison Real Krager, fake Krager. Real Krager, fake Krager. The simple things that just excite you.
just got to the speedway. Now we gotta go register and check in before we can get escorted to our pit stall. transition slot air bleeds because from the crate motor to this motor this thing has nowhere near the vacuum down low to pull on the transition slot so uh, much smaller Derek, how'd it run today? Good, man. Yep. Derek nailed it. Car ran good. All this extra horsey powers, I like it. But uh, the car felt, for how shit the track was, I mean, the track was absolute garbage. The first session of practice, it already felt like it was a burned up A main. And made a few adjustments to the car for the second session. At both times, the car felt really good. Like, it was pretty neutral. But even by the second session, when the track was even more burned up, the car just still felt neutral. And so I'm digging it, I like it. And these tires have been sitting outside in the sun for a year and we were still pretty quick with them. So I can dig that. But right now it is beer time and free food. We've got free beer, barbecue, and a concert tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Race day number one is upon us. Yesterday was practice and it was a shit show. The track was so dry and it got so ruddy that many of the cars were losing shocks and getting wrecked and beating it up car, just ripping noses off. So hopefully today they get the track a lot more water down and they're working on it right now over there. So if it's like it was yesterday, it is going to be bad. But right now I've got to get the car ready for tech. Because I'm running an open motor, I had to remove my rear spoiler. So now I'm just reattaching my deck to my deck support. And then I'm going to run it down to tech, get my little sticker, and then clean the car up. <laughs> yeah. 
you just notice some water when you check the radiator <laughs> not good but not bad either it's probably the water pump that water pump's been sitting dry for like six years anyway a lot of prepping getting ready changing tires. actually no, we're gonna leave these tires on for probably uh mud packing and hot laps and i've got some used ish new ish tires that we'll put on for the heat race rather have stickers but that's way too much money right now welcome to the bottom side of this here modified oh man dried up mud's falling on me i need to change the quick change gears these are what the rear gears look like for the quick change so you can change the gears in like five minutes but look at the crazy rear suspension that's on these cars so you got a you got a floatable four link which this floats on the axle it's not actually attached to the rear end you have a floatable brake caliber, which again, not attached to the rear end, it floats. And that's the bar that goes up to the chassis. Coilovers, you have a uh, spring-loaded top link to absorb torque away from the engine on dirt. The same thing on the other side. And, oh, and you have a J-bar too. This, this crazy rear suspension on these things compared to like the asphalt cars I used to race. And there is a crap load of adjustments and I've had to relearn everything with that. But back to changing the gears i need to uh i'm spinning way too i'm on the rev limiter way too much down the straightaways so i need to drop down two tenths of a gear to uh try and maximize my rp image again something most people don't know about these cars the clutch pedal works in reverse so you actually push the clutch pedal to go and then once you get into high gear you can take your foot off the clutch and it's just direct drive oddball but the transmission is super lightweight and it works Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Carburetor time again. So looking at the plugs from last night, I could tell that I needed a little bit more main jet. And since I don't have alcohol main jets, what I can do, again, is just go down on air bleed. So going from a 32 to a 28 to make it suck harder on that main jet. Son of a bitch. A little bit of tape on the end of the screwdriver. Got it out, but that's what I get for trying to do it one-handed and hold the GoPro. talks about mud packing. We got our fresh shoes on it. Well, fresh-ish. These are hand-me-down good tires. 
So we're gonna go see what it can do. I'm waiting for my heat race. So I got heats on track right now. They're lining up, getting ready to run their pass. A mods are heading to lineup. So I gotta go to lineup here pretty soon. But uh, see what it can do. I hope. Birdsong still hanging on to that number three spot. Cool piece. That car with the patina look wrap that actually pictures of a 69 Charger that he owns. Those exact dense wrinkles, rust spots, all are on an actual 69 Dodge Charger. Flopped it onto a modified. No big deal. Looks sharp. Hopefully everybody gets an opportunity to get up close and personal. Get a look at that hot rod some point this weekend we work five laps score to the books five down three laps to to see the footage on the in-car cam so I, so I can learn. As soon as it went green, clap, nothing. Damn it. <laughs> and elite us degree. Ursetta going to get the whole shot down into the first set of turns. Take him three wide. Oh, baby. off a turn two down the back straight away but the kid Colin Hibden right
Here comes Hibden once again to the bottom side. Look out. Hibden was in a crater. Hop, pop, turned sideways, squared it back up. Didn't hardly skip a beat. race on this track. you couldn't even freaking see the starts you were completely blind you just had to trust that the guy in front of you could see a little bit and half the time I was completely blind just holding the steering wheel straight at like half throttle hoping I wouldn't and then the track was so ruddy I spent more time in the air than I did on the ground I never even hit anybody and the car got destroyed in the right front just because the I pulled off. I had enough. Who knows how much suspension stuff is broken and how much the chassis is cracked up because of that track. Literally, Baja racing with a solid suspension go-kart. Okay, I'm revived a little bit. I got like three hours of sleep. I'm in a little bit better mood. We're gonna try and fix the car. The, uh, so I pulled off thinking that uh, the right front tire was flat because it was just dragging and pushing. The, uh, well, when I got out of the car on the track, I'm like, oh, okay, it was just a bumper. But no, it wasn't even that. The guys pitted next door to me are like, hey, do you know you have a spring under your car? So that is why the car all of a sudden wouldn't turn at all. There's a freaking spring stuck under the car. It's not even my spring. <laughs> I'm gonna leave Derek here. He's gonna do that. I gotta run some errands. I'm gonna come back and help him cobble this thing together. Hopefully, we can do good. Because right now we're 15th in points out of 99 cars. So that's on the gooder end.
prepared getting ready to go out for another day of mud packing i did find one screw up though one boo-boo so the tires and wheels that were donated to me to run the main yesterday i was running two inch offset wheels on the right front left rear and what was given to me was threes i didn't catch that that would have made it loose on entry and loose on exit which is what i had which is why i couldn't run the slick but i caught it so maybe today we'll do better time to go mud pack get dirty i love these things plus when you're racing on a budget it's coming handy Turn number two down the back straightaway. Birdsong up into the number two spot. Alan Sharpenstein rolls along the number three position. Here comes Garrett Gregory. Shot out of a cannon. 77 car. On a Tom Ball, Texas. And it's out of the top eight. Battle for that final transfer position. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. All bottled up, working down through turns one and two. We've got trouble for one. We done did forgot the hood pin. He'll pull it on left blinker into the infield, stay safe. Rock and roll and roll the first song. Got big trouble, big problems. Sparks, snakers, and all sorts of good stuff. Shut her down, big dog. It's bad news. J Bar's busted and everything's rubbing. Well, it'll self clear it's itself eventually. I believe that has happened. Jason Hill, you're going to stay out front, show the way. All right, man, that heat race started out good. Car was ripping. I was chasing that sucker down. I was gonna win that thing, and then of course my luck came out and the uh, J bar bolt snapped, which caused the whole axle to shift over a foot. Drive shaft went into its its a. Uh, uh, chassis mount which basically turned the whole car into a ball of sparks happened right there and it bent and twisted some things the drive shafts now a little bit out around and the uh, bushing came out of the transmission so I'm gonna try and knock the bushing back in but uh, yeah not a good day so far it started off good for like two laps Okay, problems ensue. It says the transmission is screwed up. Tail housing is bent. I had to knock the bushing out of the tail housing just to get the drive shaft back in it. So I'm gonna put some fluid in the transmission so that way most of it can leak back out. But at least it will have some fluid in it for the short time being. Freaking race cars, man. Down to the green flag. We'll give it a rip. Well represented on the front row. Tuck Shear gets up to the 
third position, but here comes Devin Reed in 58. Looking to go side by side. Birdsong in a qualified spot. all the way for the flags. The only excuse I can think of for my great performance and then total failure was on the last lap, I think there was no saving that spin. It's like I hit a, it's like the right front tire hit a rut. And it just whipped me around and there was nothing I could do. So from last to fourth, the transfer spot to the A main, which is out there right now. And I blew it. Dumbass. All right, coming up right now is D-Day. This is the last chance qualifier, the last chance to actually make the money show. And I start fourth row inside. I've got six laps to try and make it to the top two. So I'm just gonna have to go full send, but not a whole lot of time to dilly-dally right now. Gotta put the mud pack tires on it, mud pack, and then quickly jump off, put the race tires on, and get back in line. Up off the top, Al Thornton does the same. Here comes Birdsong. Chris Birdsong shot out of a cannon down the back straight away. Give him a qualified spot. Thornton back to fifth. Casey Delp with a bobble. 
All sorts of stuff going on down through three and four. Greg Gustus once again looking to run it high. Now Ferrando up into the number two spot. Birdsong going to bite back on the outside. Casey Delp in the fourth position. Looking to the inside. Of Try out one more time. It'll be green, white, checkered. Six laps, score complete. Green, white, checkered. Close up. The seven laps scored complete. We'll throw the green and the white together. Be a one lap dash. Somebody's getting in, somebody's going home. We'll shake that out in one quick one. Off of turn number four, Greg Gustus looking to stay shiny out front. Gray Ferrando, Chris Birdsong. Who's it going to be? Off into one and two, Dan Perry back into the picture. We're going to go three wide. Here comes Casey Dell. That blue 13 car was a dirty mofo, man. I, I was battling him clean for the last transfer spot. And I was giving this car all it had. Every once in a while, I'd hit a slick spot and I'd go into a push, but I'd gather it back up, chase his ass down. And I, I passed him once. And then under the last caution, coming to the green, he kept door slamming me and cut my right rear tire. So as soon as the green came out, I had nothing. And just lost. Dirty motherfucker, man. Now I gotta load this junk up. You know what though? For only like my 20th race ever in a modified, I'm still having a blast. I mean, it, I showed up on used tires and at a disadvantage with the open motor. So you know what? Don't care, had a blast. We'll show up again, do better. I'm still learning. So there's still there's a ton of things to learn on these cars. And with the help of friends, uh, Mike Ayers in uh, North Carolina and Ryan Ayers and Sunny Wall, Charlie Wall, all my buddies, I'm only getting better. So I started off in the back and now I'm more in the front. So every race I can be seen in the front now, even with an old chassis, disadvantage engine and disadvantage tires. So just having fun and I'm doing it. Go ahead and like and follow this channel if you enjoyed some of that. And that's just a small portion of what I do on this channel is racing stuff. You know, I'm gonna be getting back to all my muscle cars and chassis builds and everything else going on. But uh, I still like to get down and dirty a few times on the dirt. And I've only done it three times this year. Maybe more next year. See you guys next time.